Hello and welcome to Ferris Sports Update. I'm your host, Rob Bentley, and thanks for tuning in. On today's show, we'll update you on Ferris State men's and women's basketball as both teams get ready for the GLIAC tournament. We'll also talk Bulldog hockey as they get set for their regular season finale. We'll start first, though, with Bulldog women's basketball and joined by head coach Kurt Westendorf. But coach, welcome to the show. Thanks. Thanks for having me back. I know an exciting time uh, for your team. We're taping this here early in the week, but uh, GLIAC first round game on Tuesday at Parkside and just nice to be in the, the postseason and having an opportunity here for a new year. Yeah, no, our girls are really excited. We talked in the locker room, you know, after Saturday's game that once we head to the postseason, everybody's zero and zero. You know, we're going to go play an opponent that we haven't seen in a while. We saw them the second weekend of the GLIAC schedule and we had a split with them. So it'll be really nice to see kind of how our team has grown from early January to have this opportunity in March. Speaking of the opportunity, I saw a fact out there. The GLIAC had 108 women's basketball games that all got played uh, here despite the COVID-19 pandemic. Uh, how, how nice was that just for the league to get all the games in here this year? Well, I think it was just great for our girls to have that experience. So I know there was a lot of trepidation and a lot of fear of like, could we get it in? Could we not get it in? But it's a real testament to not just our team at Ferris, um, but every team throughout the entire league that people have taken the protocol seriously. You know, we knew this is what it was going to take to play the games. And I think all the teams, they've stepped up, they've done their part. Um, and it's just been great to see us have this opportunity. Obviously, uh, this past weekend, uh, you took on Wayne State as we go to the highlights. Uh, we'll start first with Friday's game and two games here that were very close and, and really helped prepare you for postseason play. Yeah, they're both nail biters. They both went down to the wire. They came down the last couple minutes of the game. I felt like defensively, we played a very good weekend, um, you know, especially on Friday, you know, forcing over 20 turnovers. Um, I felt like we did a nice job offensively. It was a little bit of a struggle for both teams. Um, I felt like both coaching staffs kind of had pretty good game plans on, you know, trying to take away the other team's top performers for the most part, try to make other people beat us. So I felt we moved the ball fairly well. We just, we just struggled to put the ball in the basket a little bit during that game one where we had a lot of opportunities to put that game away um, and opportunities throughout all 40 minutes and just couldn't close the deal down the stretch. Obviously uh, here got off to a good start, uh, had the lead after the first quarter in, in both games, but uh, Wayne State an experienced team uh, with a lot of veteran players. Uh, they do. Um, they have a real good anchor in the post. Um, talking about Sam Cherney, both offensively and defensively. You know, she's she does a very nice job of clogging up the paint. You know, we had to put a lot of attention on her on the defensive end of the court. Um, in that first game before she kind of experienced a little bit of an injury, you know, Kate Sherwood's a really good player for them. You know, has a lot of, like you said, has a lot of experience in this league. She was tough for us to guard um, in transition. But they really made a lot of nice plays down the stretch and a lot of plays that, you know, us as being a young team that we have to learn from how to close. Obviously, uh, speaking of uh, Sam Turney uh, for Wayne State, uh, a big interior player, but a uh, nice uh, matchup for two of your young freshmen that had a chance to defend her. Yeah, I feel like we did a pretty good job on the one-on-one -on -one D on the block. We made it tough for her to catch the basketball when she, when she did. We really did a nice job of challenging her. Um, that first game, Amaka Unabaga really did a nice job of challenging some shots, getting some blocks. Um, in the second game, Ari Jenkins probably did a little bit better job on her, just forcing her off the block to where any baskets that she was really getting from the field was most off of rebound putbacks, which is where she leads the league in rebounding. We knew it was going to be impossible to keep her off the O boards the entire weekend, but for the most part, those two did a nice job on her. Obviously a tough uh, setback right there. They scored with uh, just a second and a half left to go to, to get the win, and you had to come back, uh, bounce back the next day, and uh, I know your kids, uh, we're, we're looking forward to another opportunity. Yeah, it's kind of an experience that we've had a few different times throughout the year of having some of those tight games not go our way down the stretch. We experienced it just the past weekend at Purdue Northwest, losing in double overtime, and then we came back and played one of our best games of the year. So I think that's one thing that playing these back-to-back -back games throughout this season has really kind of taught our team how they have to be resilient, how they have to be able to turn the page from one game to the next. So I know that our performance, we weren't really able to come out super sharp on the offensive end again, but I don't think that's a mindset problem. I feel like our mindset was pretty darn, pretty darn good with where it had to be. You know, we just struggled again putting the ball in the basket on that second day of the back-to-back. -back. I feel like our legs were starting to get a little bit tired um, coming off of this stretch of, you know, now it's 18 games and about, I think, 51 days that we played. So hopefully we're able to kind of catch our wind as we go into the tournament. Obviously, uh, here in this game, Caden Blanchard had a nice game for you, 21 points. Nice to see her uh, come back with a big performance. Uh, obviously, teams have done a better job on her uh, here over the course of the year. Yeah, Caden played a lot more aggressive, in the, especially the second half of this game. You know, I felt like as a team, um, that first half, you can see we only scored 22 points in that first half. I felt like we were kind of a little bit walking on eggshells on the offensive end. We weren't taking it right down their throat like we needed to. We didn't get the ball to the paint as much as we needed to. That second half, I felt like we did a much better job. We kind of simplified some things offensively. They're 
here. See Caden able to get the basketball to the paint. You know, finding Sam here for a nice, nice kick out three. You know, we did a much better job of creating better shot opportunities by that mindset of being more aggressive. Obviously, they uh, kind of pushed the lead to double digits uh, here in the in the fourth, but your team, uh, as they've done all year, uh, rallied back and, and had an opportunity going down the stretch. We talked about it in the timeout with about four minutes to go, and we were down, I believe, nine. It was the exact same situation as the day before, just the roles were reversed. So I felt like we did a nice job. We got a couple of real good stops and some quick scores, cut it down to three. Um, but where we didn't make a couple of those baskets um, on Friday to kind of extend the game, they did on Saturday. So like I said, we were able to cut it to a one possession game at I think a couple different opportunities, but they made a couple nice plays down the stretch and just it was just a little bit out of our reach. Obviously now a, a new season uh, here for you and uh, going into the conference tournament, uh, seems like it's a, anyone's uh, game to win here uh, this week. Yeah, I was talking to Coach Bronkamal earlier today and we were like, yeah, you can write on the bracket on a whiteboard and then you can take your white erase marker and just kind of wipe off all the numbers right next to the team's names. Because I don't really think seeding matters a whole lot this year. Um, I, I believe anybody can win this tournament. You know, I know there's eight of us ha that have to go play a first round game. So we have the opportunity to go to Parkside, you know, an opponent, like I said, that we split with early in the year. So if we're able to get that win, we'll get some momentum rolling. And I think that we'll go into that tournament and be a tough team to beat. Obviously, uh, at Parkside uh, here in the first round, then the uh, quarterfinals, semifinals, finals, all hosted by Purdue Northwest. And, and certainly going into the conference tournament, uh, you have to have that, that mentality that uh, you take it one game at a time. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's survive in advance once you get to March. You know, everything's a one game season. So we'll go play Parkside that one game season, and we got our bags packed to go for an entire week. So we'll hopefully be heading to P Purdue Northwest and have an opportunity to play. I'm not sure if it'll be the number one, two, three, or four seed because the conference tournament will be reseeded. So we're really just focused on that first game, but our bags are packed. We're ready for the whole week. Obviously, you mentioned you've seen Parkside uh, once this year, two high scoring games, and you were able to get the split with them uh, here at Wink Arena earlier in the season. Yeah, extremely high scoring games. Games. I, I like to think that both teams have improved defensively and we're not going to see games in the 90s and 80s. I'd, I'd like it a lot more if that game was in the 70s and the 60s. Um, just re-watching and doing the scouting report, you can really see how far our team has come since early January. I think defensively we've, we've improved a ton and we'll have to show it this weekend because they're the best offense in the entire GLIAC. Obviously going into this conference tournament, uh, how important is it to, to be mentally prepared and, and ready to go? And obviously your kids have uh, kind of done that all season long here with the back-to-back -back days. Yeah, I believe that just the quick turnarounds are something that we've gotten used to. So we had our scouting report last night. You know, we'll have a you know two-hour practice right here on the court, and that's all the game prep that you really get to have. So by this point in the year, it's just about having that mentality when we show up on the court. You know, we're going to attack for 40 minutes, knowing that it might be the last 40 minutes that we get to play all year. And if we can play well enough and defend well enough, then we get to earn another 40 minutes. And Coach, thanks for being with us, and uh, best of luck uh, in the GLIAC tournament this week. Thanks, Rob. We'll be back with more Ferris Sports Update right after this.